Uh, so the title of this talk is Boscovich's Theory, Part 1, Introduction. Many things are missed out from being taught to physics students. The aim here is to give some details of one of those areas, namely Boscovich's Theory, in a series of short talks. So I'll be going by this book, uh, published in 1941. It's called Roger Boscovich, Forerunner of Modern Physical Theories. It's by H.V. Gill. So I will be highlighting some of the interesting things said. Gill says it would obviously obviously be going too far to expect that a theory, which is Boscovich's theory, put forward 200 years ago, could apply to the niceties of recent scientific thought. But it is claimed that in many cases, the fundamental principles underlying modern physical theory are to be found in the ideas first proposed by Boscovich. Since these pages are intended chiefly for readers who are more interested in the broad outlines of physical science than in any specialist theory, the subject has been treated in non-technical language and in a way that only supposes a general knowledge of modern physics. For this reason also it has been thought well to include a brief statement of certain recent theories which reflect the views of Boscovich. It is perhaps not too much to expect that even experts should they happen to read the sketch or experience no little surprise that some of the latest theories have been foreshadowed so many years ago. In referring to recent science, it has been thought well, as far as possible, to quote the words of recognised authorities on the subjects dealt with. So this gives you a rough outline of Roger Boscovich. He was uh, from Dubrovnik. And he was born 1711 and died 1787. He was a member of the Society of Jesus, uh, which may, means he was a Jesuit, and he was interested in science and mathematics. It, it surprises me that the uh, priests get interested in science, but they do. So, uh, natural philosophy is the old term for what became known as physics. And so Boscovich begins his book on the theory of natural philosophy with the following statement. The following theory of mutual forces, which I lit upon as far back as the year 1745, whilst I was studying various propositions arising from other well-known principles and from which I ha have derived the very constitution of the simple element of matter presents a system that is midway between that of Leibniz and that of Newton. It has very much in common with both and differs very much from either and as it is immensely more simple than either it is undoubtedly suitable in a marvellous degree for deriving all the general properties of bodies and certain of the special properties also by means of the most rigorous demonstrations. So Leibniz and Newton were arguing over lots of different things and one of the things they were arguing over was physics. And so Boscovich thinks he has a theory uh, midway between that of Leibniz and Newton. Uh, 
and this is uh, Newton in the picture to the left of me and Leibniz in the picture to the right of me. They, they clashed over issues in physics and maths and so Boscovich was finding common ground between them. And this is the main book by Boscovich. It's entitled in it, A Theory of Natural Philosophy Reduced to a Single Law of the Forces Existing in Nature. And you note in here that it is uh, Father Roger Joseph Boscovich. It was written in Latin and has to be translated into English. Gill says the following, there is a vast difference between the atomism of Boscovich and that of such writers as Lucretius. So atomism is the idea that physical reality is made out of particles. Uh, that idea goes back to ancient times uh, with these various ancient philosophers. So this is from Britannica uh, and it tells you about Lucretius. He was the from the first century BCE. He was a Latin poet and philosopher who wrote a poem uh, on the nature of things. I'll give you a few seconds to read that if you like. Two, three, and a drink. Hopefully, that's long enough. On to the next. Britannica says the following Atomism, any doctrine that explains complex phenomena, that's physical phenomena, in terms of aggregates of fixed particles or units. This philosophy has found its most successful application in natural science. According to the automatist view, the material universe is composed of minute particles, which are considered to be relatively simple and immutable and too small to be visible. The multiplicity of physical forms in nature then is based upon differences in these particles and in their configurations. Hence, any observable changes must be reduced to changes in these configurations. And Britannica says about this, atoms as center of force, dynamic particles. Most systems of atomism depict the action between atoms in terms of collision, i.e. as actual contact. In Newton's theory of gravitation, however, action between bodies is supposed to be action at a distance, which means that the body in question acts everywhere in space as its action is the expression of its existence. It is difficult to confine its existence to the limited space that is that it is supposed to occupy according to its precise shape and size. There is therefore no reason for a sharp distinction between occupied and empty space. Consequently, the mind finds it natural to consider the atoms not as extended particles, but as point centers of force. The conception was worked out by the scientist Boscovich, who attempted to account for all known physical effects in terms of action at a distance between point particles, dynamic centers of force. And, and this idea is very important to modern physics. And so the person who 
was dealing with this was Boscovich. So modern physics has built into it this idea coming from Boscovich's theory. And so it's very strange that it's not mentioned to physics students. Well, often it's not mentioned to physics students. Generally, they're not told anything about this. And that's from my experience when I was taught physics. As Gil points out, as we shall have occasion to point out, the theory of Boscovich approaches much nearer to modern theories of matter than is generally supposed, and in many points there is a startling anticipation of modern thought. And I want to pass on what Lucretius thinks, because it's not his theory that modern physics uh, was based upon, instead it was Boscovich's theory that modern physics is based upon for automatism. So my next talk I'm going to be picking up in more details about Boscovich's automatism. That's the idea that physical reality is made from particles. And that's the end. Thank you.